Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Welcome to Mass this morning, as we celebrate the feast of St Peter and St Paul. And I'm particularly glad to welcome today, as our guest preacher, a much-loved former curate in this parish and social media star, Father Chris Davis, and we look forward to hearing what he has to say to us later in our service. So as we prepare to meet with our Lord in both word and sacrament, let us say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said to his apostles, You are my friends if you obey my commands. Let us now confess our disobedience to him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, and made one by your Spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so now we have our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with a sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up, quickly. And the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i 
reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack, and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I do not call you servants, but friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. 
He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May be given to me to speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's lovely to be with you all this morning. One of the pluses of being locked down is that I've had a chance to catch a few of the services from Grimsby Minster. And I had a number of you join me here in Loughton as well. The service at Grimsby have reminded me what I've been missing, the wonderful choral tradition which Steve Maxson has managed to keep going in, even in these most difficult circumstances. And it's been a pleasure to experience them afresh. And I was delighted to be able to come and preach this morning. And it's great to be back here, here or back with you in Grimsby Minster uh, for this feast of St Peter and St Paul. This time of year marks our priestly, those of us who are priests and deacons, our ordinations. So this weekend is seven years since I arrived in Grimsby as a young, fresh-faced, good-looking curate. Now look at me. The feast, uh, feast of St Peter and the Peter himself, the Apostle, has been an important figure for me as long as I can remember. One of my earliest school memories was taking part in a school plashkin play, like the annual Lyle Marsden performance, I can remember. I was classed as St Peter and I remember the direction given to me by my teacher. Enthusiasm. Be enthusiastic. And as I have grown in the faith and continued my journey to be a follower of Christ, I have come to know Peter more. And as a personality and as a saint, he has spoken to me on that journey, inspired me and refreshed me. I have come to know St Peter as one of the most human of figures, full of human traits, like us all, human failures. But there are narratives which we all know so well of where he goes at it full throttle, never holding back and perhaps missing the point in his overreaching enthusiasm. At that moment before the Last Supper, when Jesus attempts to wash the feet of all of his disciples, at first Peter refuses, and then Jesus explains that he has been called to be his servant, and it is all explained to Peter again. And then Peter responds, well, that not is not just my feet, but my whole body. You can, well, I can see the enthusiastic response, wanting always to take it to the next level. Being so enthusiastic, Peter often makes mistakes. 
And sometimes these mistakes were as full in his life as the blessings. His love for Jesus sometimes meant he lost sight of his own failure and limitations. Later at that same Last Supper, Jesus forgets his own failings, his own limitations in his humanity and declares to Jesus that he will go with him to prison and to death. Jesus replies, no, Peter, better than he knew himself, says he'll actually deny him three times. Of course, Jesus was right and Peter was wrong. He did deny him three times before the cock crowed. In that event, Peter came to know himself, came to see his own failings laid before him, something that we are too all aware of, how we see our own failures as humans, and that how Jesus, through his grace and his Holy Spirit, helps us to see are those failings in ourselves and through our relationship with him he we can come to heal ourselves through his grace although in all those failings of peter and we can all perhaps name some more what was clear was that peter loved his lord he was enthusiastic and confident in his faith. And we hear again in our Gospel this morning the depth of that faith and the love he has for Jesus. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. For in Peter we see a follower in Christ enthusiastic and confident in his faith. He knew Jesus and was confident that he was more than teacher, more than just a rabbi. He knew that the man so enthusiastically, that he followed so enthusiastically, was the son of man. We think Peter was a little older than the other disciples around and in another set of circumstances he perhaps would have been the leader, the rabbi there. But he knew that Jesus was with him, that Jesus, the Son of Man, was called to be the leader, and he to be a follower. And it takes a special faith, a special kind of understanding of the circumstances that are laid before you, to deny yourself a role which you think should rightly be yours and to take a different one. Peter so enthusiastically took this role again to be the follower of Christ. It was for all these reasons perhaps that Jesus chose Peter to be the rock and the rock on which the followers of Christ would build their church. The decision, when you think about it, is a profound one and tells us more about vocation, reminds us again about God's love and understanding. In choosing Peter to become the rock of, on the church, he wasn't choosing perfection, he wasn't choosing a human that always made the right cause. He wasn't picking a person who didn't make mistakes. In calling Peter, Jesus was calling a broken man, someone whose life was full of mistakes, someone who sometimes lacked the courage to make the right call, a human who was frightened and scared. In picking Peter, Jesus was calling a human, 
like you and me. Because in building the church on Peter, he knew he was a follow, follower who was full of love, the love of God. He was picking someone who was enthusiastic, who lived for the gospel and the way of Christ. He was picking someone who's, who, human tra who had human traits and human failings. It just didn't matter because at this stage, having come and dwelt among us, Jesus understood human failings as better than anyone. So what mattered more was picking someone who had that love of God in their hearts. Someone who was always willing to try again. Someone who was enthusiastic to keep on trying. Enthusiastic to tell and show more people the love of God. And in Peter we have the perfect example of this. So why does that matter to us here this morning when we try and follow the way of Christ? How can Peter help us on our own individual journeys? Well firstly he reminds us that we are all good enough that Jesus understands that we make mistakes, that, when that he doesn't let them dominate us, so neither should we let our mistakes dominate our journey from this point on. We have to put them aside, learn from them and start afresh. Jesus calls you and me like Peter, not because we are perfect, but because we are human and wants us to be the best human that we can be, to enthusiastically continue to try and be the best that we can. But understanding that on that journey, on that search, on this way of Christ, we will make mistakes. We will need to try again. And that is how God calls each of us to keep on trying and have another go. Jesus calls us to love him, love him enthusiastically with all of ourselves, to give ourselves up to that love, sometimes to be over the top in understanding God's love for us, to be able to take the love of God to the next level. If we can set our like Peter set his. We too can come to understand and know more of God. We can deepen our relationship with him and God can lead us and help us to be the, to be the humans he calls us to be. And as he calls us, like, to, like Peter too, we will find a friend in Jesus just like Peter did. Amen. We now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the church throughout the world, remembering especially today the United Church of North India and the Most Reverend Dr Prem Chand Singh, moderator of CNI and Bishop of Jalapur. May church communities worldwide continue to be a beacon of hope in these times where access to church buildings and communal worship is so restricted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen and all those who serve our country in positions of authority. Grant them wisdom, humility and integrity as they make decisions about the National Health Service, about education provision and other challenging decisions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish in the heart of Grimsby, for our bishop, for our clergy, Catherine, Pat and Jan, and for all those who support them, particularly the church wardens, the staff at the parish office, the director of music and their families. During this period of interregnum, we ask God's blessing, guidance and strength as they prepare to reopen the Minster and make significant decisions for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Derek, Mary, Susie, Alan, Kane and Barbara and those whose needs are known to God alone. May they and those whose pain is known to you find comfort and peace in the knowledge of your enduring love. We pray also for mothers-to-be and their partners at this time of great uncertainty that they may feel supported in their isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the deceased, remembering today especially Mary, Mick and Gaynor. May perpetual light shine upon them and may they rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we call to mind all our unspoken prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the peace. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Father, accept all we bring before you this day. Guide us with your love and feed us at your table, as you nourish the faith of the church. By the preaching of your apostles, Peter and Paul, we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should give you thanks, praise and glory, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For after his resurrection, he sent out his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations and lead us in the way of truth. Himself, the chief cornerstone, he founded his church upon the apostles, firmly to stand for ever as a sign of your holiness upon earth and a living witness to all of the way that leads to heaven. And so with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices and join in their unending hymn of praise. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, St James, St Hugh, St Mark and St Martin and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us in eternal life. Amen. We join together in saying an act of spiritual communion. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving, even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptised and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me, and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the Apostles 
with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our service this morning is drawing to a close, but before it does, I would just like to welcome you all again and thank you for joining us this morning uh, for our service of um, Mass. I'd like to say a very special thank you too to Father Chris for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to have you with us again. Some of you will have read in the news about the prospect of churches reopening for worship from the 3rd of July. With regards to the parish of St Mary and St James, we will be looking to open opening the Minster as soon as we possibly can for private prayer. At the moment though, we are following the Covid guidance and making sure that the church is safe for you to enter. And so I hope that you will bear with us for a while until we are able to complete all the necessary arrangements. So we won't be opening on the 3rd of July, but just watch this space and we will provide you with up-to-date information as and when it is available. But we hope to be open before too long. So then, let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help.